What's up guys, it's your boy Ice, and today we'll be doing a blind playthrough of Hikari NFT's Gen U. Quick disclaimer, nothing I say or do on this channel should be interpreted as financial advice. Make sure to do your own research before making any purchases. Let's get into it. A child is left in desperate circumstances. A perfect baby. Oh man, I already have goosebumps from this. <laughs> so, a boy or a girl? Let's go with a boy. After five years in your village's orphanage, you are transferred to another one in the city to begin school. It's your first day at school. Where do you sit in class? In the front row, next to the pretty girl, back corner with the boys, by sitting, uh, by the boys sitting alone. Oh geez, um, probably in the back corner with the boys. Later that day, you see a young boy getting picked on in the courtyard by a group of kids. While not physical yet, you feel it could escalate at any point. What do you do? A. Ignore it. B. Tell the teacher. C. Defend him. And D. Join in with the bullies. Some friends could be handy. Let's defend him. Let's be the hero. Let's defend him. <laughs> Alright, fuck being the hero. We're moving on. You burst into the group and attempt to put some distance between the two parties. The group smirks in unison before lunging at you, landing a flurry of ringing blows. You fall to the ground in agony, only to see a flying kick towards your torso. It connects with your forearm with a crack as you attempt to protect your organs. Gosh. The young boy is also bashed by the group until the teacher shows up to clear them off his limp body. Your arm is broken. You nurse it gently for a few weeks. You're approached by a group of boys one night. They tell you they've discovered a way to steal extra food from the kitchen at night. A little extra food could go a long way. Rations in the orphanage are meager. Your friends would be extremely grateful. However, the boys are known troublemakers. What do you do? Take the lead of the raid, join them tonight, politely decline, and make a plan to do it on your own. Let's take the lead on the raid. <laughs> All right, we're doing well, boys. We're doing well. That night, you attempt a raid. All is going to plan until four of you slip back out of the kitchen. You're greeted by the cracking of the matron's giant wooden spoon across your back. Ouch. You're all dragged into the headmaster's study and beaten one by one. Holy shit. Your strangled yelps pierces, piercing in the stillness of the night. Someone must have ratted. To make things worse, you're forced to do chores for weeks after as punishment. Ah, <sighs> a howling snowstorm blows through overnight. The rising sun reveals a city covered in a blanket of snow. A snow day is announced. You have most of the day to yourself. What do you do? Snow day, huh? So what do we do on a snow day? Are we gonna read on our own? Or are we gonna play outside with the others? Let's play outside with the others. You and your friends are called into the headmaster's study. This does not look good. <laughs> he hands you each punishments for leaving graffiti in the school's latrine. None of you were involved, but your headmaster is not known to budge. It may be, uh, it may be best not to resist. What do you do? I guess we're gonna accept punishment. Let's do it. All right, I guess there, is there an achievement for having zero mana? Cause that's, that's kind of looking like where I'm headed right now. <laughs> you bite your tongue and accept the lashings. Strained yelps escape your closed lips. Weeks pass before you fully recover. So it's been like months in this universe already. And all I've done is lose seven mana. One night you sneak out with your closest female friend uh, to look for a kitten you found recently. She's grown fond of it and was equally upset when it ran away. You spend hours searching for the neighbor uh, through the neighborhood under the faint moonlight, calling its name. Growing tired, you find yourself on a rooftop overlooking the cityscape, faintly lit by the moonlight and glowing lanterns. This is the first time the two of you have been alone together. Your hands brush together as you stare out into the view in silence. She turns to you, looking deeply into your eyes. Do you A. Lean in and kiss her B. Take her hand in yours C. Act like nothing happened or D. Tell her how much she means to you as a friend Well, C or D is out of the question, I suppose, right? Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's take it slow. Let's just, let's take her, let's take her in her hand. All right, finally. Plus two mana, let's go. She grips your hand tightly. You feel lucky to have her in your life. On the way home, her, her warm hand is wrapped tightly in yours. 
Guaranteed minus 100 mana if I leaned in and kissed her. God damn. You're working on a group assignment in class. One of your group members has a very ambitious idea, which would surely get you a great mark if done correctly. Plenty could go wrong though, do you? A, take the lead. B, get behind the idea and convince all the skeptics that it's of its merits. C, quietly point out the flaws in your plan. Or D, ask the teacher quietly to change groups. Well, last time I took the lead, I kind of got screwed over. So let's, uh, let's quietly point out the flaws in the plan, see what happens. All right, so I guess being a snitch is the, is the way to go. <laughs> your rational thinking is heated and incorporated into the plan. Against all odds, you managed to deliver an outstanding piece of work, earning great marks from your teacher and recognition from your peers. Awesome. You hear about plans for a bonfire by the river. All the older kids in the orphanage are sneaking out to it, including some of your best friends. Those who are caught will surely be beaten by the headmaster. What do you do? I'm gonna stay. <laughs> for real? Come on. <laughs> Anti-social. Oh, shit. <laughs> you stay home. Early in the morning, you hear the boys slip back into the dorm. The smell of wood smoke clinging into their clothes. No one is caught and everyone raves about how much fun it was. Your friends begin hanging out with the older kids more and you aren't invited to future bonfires. Rip. All right. One morning, all orphans are called into the hall and told to stand in number order. An old man enters uh, with the housemaster and proceeds to inspect each child, questioning some of them. When he gets to you, he pauses. He stares deeply into your eyes, his old, squinty eyes piercing right through you. He holds your gaze for a moment before his face softens and breaks into a slight smile? If you can call it that. He turns back to the housemaster and says something to him privately. You are all dismissed back to your dorms. I wonder what he said. The next morning, you are told to pack up your things. The old man is adopting you. Oh, damn. Your headmaster says you're a very lucky boy. The man is a well-respected warrior, long since retired. You scrape together your few belongings and squeeze in for a few brief goodbyes before you are booted out of nothing more than an address. Hours later, you arrive at a derelict old apartment with Guang branded above the doorframe. Inside, you find a thick red door with the same symbol. You edge it open to reveal a breathtaking garden and courtyard. This is actually giving me goosebumps right now. Let's go. An old man scoops up the white cat and walks towards you. You made it. We have been expecting you. Now you must come. We are already behind schedule. You hesitantly follow the man, still taking in your surroundings. What is this place? He leads you through the courtyard into a dojo connected at its far end. Inside are seven other young people standing at attention. You are the final student to join my class. By being here, you are signing up for a life unlike any of your peers, he says. You may not realize it, but there are dark forces in this realm. The very same ones I eradicated in my youth. Now they have resurfaced and threatened the very balance of our existence. I have been watching you all. Within each of you is a power that, left untapped, would never be harnessed. It has been prophesized one of my students will be the one to restore balance to our realm. We have no time to waste. There is much work to do. My job as your sensei is akin to that of a potter. Before I can mold you, I must first know what I am working with. What drives you? What is your mission in this life? Do not rush this child. Um, okay. A. I want to live life doing what I love, surrounded by those I love. B. I want to raise a family and be the parent I never had. C, I, I want to achieve greatness. To never push one's limits is to waste one's life. D, I want to achieve perfection in my craft. I'm going to go with D, to achieve perfection of my craft. I see, you will be a perfect match for Kira, gesturing to a dark-haired girl in the line. You two will be training partners. She glowers at you, her fierce gaze penetrating right through you. Training starts tomorrow. Be here before sunrise, says Sensei. So I guess uh, this one is Kira? In the boys' dorm, you meet Kibu, another orphan from across town. Unlike the other boys who would only trade glares with you, he cheerfully introduces himself. The kid has a certain energy about him that comforts you in this strange place. 
You explain your story to him and vice versa. It appears you're both cut from the same cloth. Sleep eludes you until the early hours of the morning, your brain struggling to make sense of the past day's events. All right, here we go. You spend the following months learning the basics of martial arts and swordsmanship. The training is grueling and the sleep is sparse. You feel your body and mind strengthening as the weeks fly by. Kira is a fierce competitor, perhaps a little too fierce, punishing you for every mistake you made. You still know nothing about her. She rarely speaks to anyone. You are intrigued by this sword-wielding maiden. One day you arrive for her training to see Sensei standing with a blade by his side. He announces he will be holding a tournament amongst the students. The winner shall receive one of his prized tantos. You each must use a bokken. Hardened by your training, you successfully battle your way to the final knockout round before the finals. Kibu is your next opponent. He fights well, but you are able to overpower him, landing strikes up and down his torso. Finally, you catch him off balance and wincing in pain. You have the perfect opening to deal a finishing blow to your already injured friend. You hesitate, glancing at Sensei. His face remains like steel. What do you do? A. Deliver a half-strength blow. B. Throw your Bakken aside and help him. C. Finish him. And D. Ask Sensei if you have to finish him. Let's finish him. Oh man, I didn't want to make that decision almost. I thought I was going to backfire like crazy. <sighs> you put your entire weight into the crushing final blow, which leaves Kibu sprawled across the floor. He takes a week to fully recover. You go on to win the tournament, with Kira having already been eliminated after injuring her arm in earlier rounds. Sensei awards you with the sword. It vibrates gently in your hands. You are having trouble sleeping one night, so you head to get some water from the courtyard. While tiptoeing through the silent halls of the compound, you pass an open door and see Kira sitting alone overlooking the city. She's always acted cold towards you, but you can't help but admire her natural ability. She intrigues you. Where is she from? How does she end up here? Do you? Continue quietly to the fountain, bring her a glass of water, try to talk to her, challenge her to some late night, tra late night training. Let's, let's try to talk to her like a normal person. You walk up to her. As you get closer, she turns around and smiles warmly. You sit down next to her, unsure why she's acting so strange. She barely said a word to you outside of training. You're pretty good, you know. You stare at her blankly. In training, you're the only one that makes it difficult for me, she clarifies. Thanks, same to you. This is super cute, love this. She giggles and puts her hand on yours. You both stare out at the night sky, the silver of moon casting a gentle light down on the courtyard and garden. So what's your story, she asks. Her clear blue eyes stare deeply into yours. You tell her about your years in the orphanage and how you ended up sitting here next to her. She shares a similarly tragic story. Her parents, both killed in their homes over a debt they owed. She was spared and raised by her grandmother until she too died, leaving her to fend for herself in the streets. The two of you talk for hours, her head eventually resting on your shoulders as she drifts off to sleep. Months roll by. Your bond with Kira, Kibu, and the other students grow considerably. Training is fiercely competitive, but you feel an interesting connection with these, two friend, with these new friends of yours. You all have struggled in similar ways throughout your childhood. Sensei informs you that your final exam will be levels above anything you have done before. Only those who can adapt and overcome have a chance of facing the evil threatening the realm. Your penultimate exam approaches quickly. A successful graduate must be able to adapt to different environments. For this reason, you're going to swap partners for this exam. You naturally pair up with Kibu. Kira joins forces with Kibu's partner, Jin. Somewhere in this city lies a scroll passed down to me by my master years ago. and contains ancient instructions to harness powers untapped by most. It will be a huge advantage in the final exam for those who successfully retrieve it. You have 12 hours. Your first and only clue is this. You will find it where the sky meets the earth. Where do you go? A, to the Hoshi Temple, the tallest in the city, and B, to Mount Shinano, the tallest nearby peak. Um, where sky meets the earth. So it's gotta be a mountain top, right? So, okay, let's go to the mountain. You set off in the direction of Mount Shinano with Kibu, careful not to let anyone tell you. 
This art is sick, man. You reach the foot of the mountain as the sun draws low to the sky. Time is of the essence. Feeling sluggish after walking all day, you and Kibu hike the mountain at a steady pace. As you near the craggy final sections, you notice Kira and Jin dragging themselves along ahead of you, clearly worn out. You feel like you have just enough left in the tank to catch them. To the left, you notice what looks like a climbable face on the side of the peak. A fall would mean serious injury if not worse, but would surely get you to the top first. Oh god. Do you? Stay on the path but pick up the pace, scale the wall yourself or ambush them. Oh my goodness. Why am I doing this? I'm ambushing them. <laughs> yep, pays to be an asshole, I suppose. <laughs> Success. But my mana didn't change. Why is that? The heck? You find a thick patch of scrub to hide behind. After a short wait, you hear the duo approaching. Their quick steps down the path soon grow close, gravel crunching underfoot. With a perfectly timed tackle from you and Kiba, Kira and Jin are sent flying, crashing back to the earth with a thud. A supple leather pouch scatters across the path, stopping right at your feet. Shocked by with the flawless success of your plan, you scoop up the pouch and take off down the hill, heading for Sensei's compound. Wow. Really? Damn. Once safely concealed in the bustle of the city, you find a quiet alleyway to inspect the scroll. The paper is delicate and frayed. The text is an old script, barely legible. It refers to the phrase used by the ancients of the Tempest clan to command the power of the wind. Kibu closes his eyes and mutters something under his breath. A blast of wind instantly radiates out from him, sending dust and leaving a flurry along the alleyway. Whoa, Kibu yells. You glance down at the scroll and read the phrase aloud. This time, the blast cracks like a whip, shunting Kibu back and creating a shower of splinters that ripples down the street. With newfound power at your fingertips, you run back to the compound, buzzing with excitement. You cannot wait for the final exam. Back at the compound, Sensei is waiting for you all. He congratulates you and Kibu on successfully finding the scroll. He explains that the power contained in it is a basic wind elemental phrase. Long protected by the Tempest Clan, it is a versatile source of power that will be a huge help to you in your final exam. Tomorrow, you will begin your final test, Sensei states. Only those who are successful have a chance of defeating the evil resurfacing in our realm. You lie awake that night, reliving your childhood as you stare into the darkness. Tomorrow will be the most important day of your life. It will be your chance to graduate from Sensei's class and finally join him in his quest to rid the realm of resurfacing evils, whatever they may be. You've come so far. Not bad for an orphan, huh? You think to yourself. As you finally drift off to sleep, you feel a gentle tapping on your shoulder. Let me in. You hear Kira whisper gently. You feel her warm skin against yours and instinctively pull her in tightly. I couldn't sleep. Tomorrow's exam could be anything, she confesses. Once more, you are stunned to see this side of her. You are mesmerized by the contrast of her fierceness in combat and the vulnerability she shows around you. You realize how grateful you are to have her by your side in this journey. You put your fingers gently under her chin and bring her lips to yours. Tangled in each other's arms and feeling grateful for everything you have in your life, you drift off to sleep. You wake up later that night to a thud. Kira is sound asleep next to you. Get up to check it? Um, yeah, investigate the noise. What the fuck? Whoa. Yo, I have mad goosebumps right now. Holy shit. Okay, you slip out of bed, careful not to disturb Kira. As you tiptoe down the long corridors of the compound, you hear the sound again, this time coming from Sensei's bedroom. You tear open the door to find his room in pieces, with a trail of blood leading out of the remnants of his door. Peering out into the darkness, you see his limp body being dragged by men in dark tunics towards a horse. Within seconds, they load him onto it and speed off into the darkness. Terrified, you call the rest of the students at the top of your lungs. There could be other intruders lurking still. What the hell happened last night? Who would hurt Sensei? Is he still alive? Questions swarm your mind. After clearing the compound for intruders, you gather with the other students. We need to figure out who would take him. This is step one, says Kira. Sensei lived a very isolated existence. His whole life revolved around training the students or tending to his gardens. 
you can't recall him ever mentioning anyone else in his life. What if the evil we are training to defeat got to him before he could finish our training? They must know of the prophecy he spoke of. This would be a preemptive strike to prevent him from raising someone capable of quashing their return, says Kibu. If that's true, then how are we supposed to find or save him? None of us have passed the final exam. Then clearly overpowered sensei, what good will we be able to do, says Jin. We have to do something. He'd do the same for us. Kira suddenly charges back into the compound. Sensei said in his youth he crushed these people once before. He must have some information on them in his study, her voice trailing off. Inside his study, you rummage through drawers and unfurl old scrolls. You stumble across a scroll of wind breathing from yesterday's challenge, committing the phrase to memory. It will surely be helpful against the mysterious evil. Kibo hauls a thick, leather-bound notebook off the top shelf, slamming it down on Sensei's desk. It cracks and creaks as you bend its stiffened bindings, flipping halfway through the book. It appears to be a diary or sorts with sketches of martial art poses. Judging by the date, these entries were made when Sensei was still a young man. You and Kibu closely inspect the entries looking for anything that may help. Shivers run down your spine as you set eyes on a detailed sketch of a shadowy figure. Its glowing eyes shining through the fearsome mask, you begin to piece together who Sensei's former enemy is and the power they command. Sensei refers to them as the Ochita. He writes of their intention to eradicate the clan system that governs the use of elemental powers throughout the realm. In Sensei's time, they attempted to crush each clan, master their powers, then subjugate their people. The uniqueness and traditions of each clan would have been lost forever. They are the remnants of a fifth clan that was disbanded due to the misuse of their elementals. Perhaps that's how they overpowered Sensei? In later entries, Sensei details his eventual conquest of the clan. He and his companions pushed their forces back to their only remaining bastion, Sabishi Castle. Here, they successfully crushed the leaders and destroyed their castle, never to be heard from again. Sabishi isn't far from here. Maybe they're using their runes as a base of operation? On your way back to the other students, you pull Kira and Kibu aside for a moment. A. We're leaving together now. B. What do you think we should do? We need a plan. C. We need to plan this mission carefully first. Let's go with A. We're leaving together now. They both agree. Extra people will only slow you down. It's too dangerous for everyone to come. Armed with the finest of Sensei's weapons, the three of you sneak out of the compound, you leaving the other students a note telling them to send help to Sabishi if you're not back by sunrise. You hitch a ride and begin the long journey up the coast. Hours later, you spot the remains of a Sabishi spires peeking above the horizon. Set upon a standalone column of granite, it was once an impenetrable fortress. Once the drawbridge was lifted, there was no way in, aside from using grappling hooks to clear the dizzying gaps between it and the mainland. You thank the farmer who had allowed you to ride with him, tossing him a gold coin from his troubles. You wait for nightfall to approach the castle. The three of you slip across the makeshift bridge from the mainland and arrive on the foot of its towering walls. On your approach, you notice the faint glow of torches flickering around the perimeter. There's definitely someone here, whispers Kibu. You peek through one of the gaps in the crumbling walls and see a masked guard. Hoping to avoid a confrontation, you circle around the fort, but each break in the wall you find is being watched closely. How do you get in? A. Ask Kira and Kibu for ideas. B. Take out a guard together. C. Take out the guard on your own. Or D. Try to find the sewer entrance you saw in Sensei's blueprints. The three of you skirt around to the rear of the fort and carefully climb partway down the back shoulder of the rocky outcrop Sabishi sits upon. You find the sewer outlet shown on the blueprints. While wide enough for you to climb through, the gate is rusted on the edge of the drain pipe, fusing it closed. Thankfully, a stiff tug by the three of you sets it free in a shower of dark orange flakes. Peering inside, you catch the faint smell of sewage clinging to the walls. There's no way, man, says Kibu, gaggling dramatically. It obviously hasn't been used for decades, get over it, Kira snaps as she climbs in head first. You look at Kibu and shrug your shoulders before following her. You pop out inside the walls in one of the latrines. The three of you slip outside. 
The three of you sneak through the fort silently, maneuvering around the guards' patrols. You find an open window to the central hall and hoist yourselves through. Inside, wind howls through the cracks in its walls. I think they'll have him held on the top floor, says Kibu. There's bound to be guards up there. You creep up the floors until you see a flickering of the torch on the floors above you. To bypass the guard, you climb out the window and scale your way to the top floor. You peer through one of the many holes in the walls and see Sensei slumped against the far wall, badly beaten. You force your way into the room through one of the larger openings and gently rouse Sensei, your fingers pressed across your lips. His eyes crack open. He takes a few moments to recognize you, his face showing a wave of fear sweeping over him. Get out of here, quick, he croaks. Not without you, Kira replies. She helps him to his feet, and you carrying him out. The three of you manage to guide him down the roof and sneak away from the tent chute and towards the hole in the wall you came through. As you reach the gap, a squad of masked men come rushing out after you, quickly closing the distance. You and Sensei come to the bridge first, looking back for Kira and Kibu. Suddenly, an orange orb streaks from across the fort wall and thuds into the bridge. A barrage of fire arrows follow, their flames quickly spreading along the dry rope and engulfing the entire structure. Kira and Kibu screech to a halt, covering their face as it collapses in a shower of embers. The men snatch them both. One unmasked thug stares Sensei off across the divide. We must go. We cannot help them like this. They will not hurt them, this much I know. Sensei's voice trailing away as he turns and hobbles away from the castle, leaning heavily on his staff with each step. On the long walk to the nearest village, Sensei recounts what happened to him. The masked men are indeed the Ochita from decades ago, this time led by the eldest grandson of their former leader. Sensei had been the one to kill him, ending their insurgency. A new generation has surfaced under Ichiro, a young man set on avenging his grandfather's death and the death of his clan. During his captivity, Sensei was tortured for information. Ichiro must have discovered how Sensei and his allies defeated their clan previously. Only from Sensei can he discover the weakness to their elementals. He will not hurt Kira or Kibu. He needs them to get to me, says Sensei. The compound is not safe for us. They will come looking. I know of somewhere where we can go while I regain my strength. You have your final exam to complete also, he continues. You walk all night and hitch a ride the next morning, far up into the nearby mountains. A further hike on foot through thick forest leads you to the clearing overlooking the plains and coast in the distance. Below lies a small, worn cabin. This is where I trained as a young man many years ago. We shall stay here for the time being, says Sensei, before heading inside the cabin and shoving the warped old door closed. As the sun sets, you huddle under the old cherry blossom for warmth. Drained after the events of the past two days, you drift off to sleep. Nagging thoughts of Kira and Kibu circle your mind. Sensei does not come out at all the next day. When he finally does emerge the following day, his bruises have faded slightly and he is able to walk semi-normally again. He calls you to the small copped courtyard in front of his cabin. Now you shall begin the final exam he says, while staring off towards the coast. Your anxiety spikes. What could it be? Am I even ready for it? What if I fail? You think to yourself frantically. Sensei turns back to you calmly. A true warrior accepts a life of hardships. The hardship you choose to accept determines the warrior you shall become. Some accept challenges that they can never achieve, but strive every day to do so. Some give up their friends and family for a life of solitude, in search of complete mastery. Some carry the burdens of others when they cannot themselves, he trails off. My boy, what hardships do you choose to accept? A. I will be the rock of my clan and family. B. I will devote myself to the protection of those who cannot protect themselves. And C. I will fight the greatest evils in all corners of the realm. Or D. I will devote myself to the mastery and advancement of my craft. Sensei pauses for a moment. I see, he mutters. Your journey will undoubtedly be long and arduous. Those you encounter may help you or hinder you. Love and friendship, while often sources of great happiness and fulfillment, can expose you to the deepest of injuries. What role will relationships play in your journey as a warrior? I cannot give people the power to hurt me. I will be self-efficient. 
My friends and partner are my joy. I will always prioritize them first. People will be in my life until they are no longer a benefit to me. We're gonna go with B. Sensei gives a dry smile. That's not good. Oh, to be young again. A blank canvas, the entire world to explore, he says as he stares up to the horizon. Fear is the box that limits our potential. What is it that you fear most? Dying alone, never making my mark on the world, failing as a father, plateauing in the mastery of my craft. Guess let's let's play to the play to the narrative. Whoa. Oh, okay, this is, uh, I guess this is where I choose my clan. Sensei holds your gaze for a long moment, eventually dropping his chin and heading back into the cabin. He returns with a handful of leather pouches, each of varying shades and degrees of wear. He fetches a small table and rough mats to sit on. On the table, he lays out each pouch and opens them to reveal a set of scrolls similar to that used in your penultimate exam. It is customary for a sensei to pass down one of his skills to his top student. Now, you must choose. First, the mist elemental, used to summon a thick fog to conceal your movements. Secondly, the beast elemental, uh, used to control nearby animals for a short duration. Thirdly, the star elemental, used in hand-to-hand -hand combat to deliver explosive punches or kicks by channeling the energy of the stars. Finally, the flame elemental, used to summon a rush of searing flames to be directed at its user. Also helpful to light up the area, Sensei finishes. Which one will you take? Um, I want to go with flame. Cool, I guess there's really no right or wrong decision in that, right? You spend the following few days at the cabin, honing the use of your new elemental while Sensei continues his recovery. One morning, you hear a set of hurried footsteps thudding down from the trail leading to the cabin. You hide behind the cherry blossom and clutch your sword. You make out a faint outline flickering through the bushes. It can't be. Your heart jumps as you see Kira running down the path towards you. Aww. Tears well up in your eyes as she throws herself around you, the two of you falling over into the grass in each other's arms. Sensei comes out of his cabin and smiles from ear to ear. Before you can say a word, she bursts out. I escaped. We have no time to waste. They are hurting Kibu. I'll explain on the way. Follow me. This sounds like a trap. What the hell? You and Sensei collect your few belongings and you begin what you expect to be a long journey. Around the campfire that night, Kira has a chance to recount the days since you were separated. We were taken far up into the mountains to the former Ochita temple. Until recently, it has been run by monks, but an Ochita cell has reclaimed it by force. There we were starved, gagged, and beaten. They wanted information on Sensei's whereabouts and were asking if you had ever mentioned your days fighting their forefathers. We of course knew nothing, so the beatings worsened. You shuffle over and comfort her. Kibu and I attempted a breakout when they took us for interrogation one evening. We shook off our guards, but Kibu tripped as we escaped into the forest. They pounced on him. I figured I was more help to the outside than on inside, so here I am. And you found us? How? In your journal. I looked back through them and saw you mention your sensei's old cabin. It was the first place I looked. Ah, excellent work, Hiro. I'll make a fine warrior of you, yet. He pauses. And your bruises? What bruises? Oh yeah, they healed up quick, right? Says Kira, stroking the soft, smooth skin on her legs. I hope Kibu is recovering well also. I must rest. We have many leagues to travel tomorrow, declares Sensei. The two of you huddle under a blanket together, staring up at the bright night sky. You sit in silence as the stars make their slow crawl across the sky. Eventually, Kira says, After all this is over... However things end, if they even end at all, what happens to us? What are we? You pause, carefully choosing your words. I will do what's best for me. Oh boy. I want to adventure on my own. I want to be with you, and I want to restore the dojo and reconnect with our friends. Oh god. Okay. Anime Sitmo. I want to be with you. Let's go. <laughs> What a fucking call out. She goes quiet, oddly quiet. You lie back and she nestles her head into your chest. Your arms wrap tight around her, grateful to have her back. Your mind travels to Kibu, locked away alone, beaten and bruised. See you soon, bud, you whisper to the stars. The following day on the trail to the Ochita temple, you come to a crossroad. Kira, leading the column, walks off to the left, causing Sensei to stop. 
This is not the fastest way to the temple. We must go right here, said Sensei, gesturing to the other path. Kira shoots a glance both ways. This is the way I came from. I found a shortcut or a back entrance when I got away. Much easier to sneak in from. We should go this way just to be safe. Sensei pauses. The left path will get us there, but through a series of overground routes. Mine will be quicker. Are we not hurrying for Kibu's sake? He argues. Which path do you take? Gotta go with Sensei on this one. I just, I just feel like something is off with her. Let's go with Sensei. And yet I fucking told her I want to be with her in the previous panel. God. <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. We can go your way. You probably know better than me anyway. She smiled. The three of you begin your way down the right path. What the fuck was that all about? That evening, after a full day's travel, Sensei pulls you aside while setting up camp. Kira's been flipped. That's what I'm saying. We must part ways with her tonight. What? Flipped? What do you mean? Why would we leave her now? Some way or another, Ichiro has convinced her to join him. She is setting us up for a trap. Every minute we spend with her is at risk. You stare at him in silence, unable to take in the situation. She wouldn't, not Kira. Where are her bruises? Why try to take us on the wrong way? His voice remains hushed. A wave of anguish ripples through your body as you see her plan revealed. Anger, heartache, and confusion flood your mind. She was going to betray you both. We must leave soon. She cannot know we will. She may as well attack us or escape. Either way, we have a problem. If we leave tonight, we can beat her to the temple and rescue Kibu first, says Sensei. What do you do? Slip away without her. Let's do it. With Kira fast asleep, you sneak out from under your blanket and slip away into the darkness with Sensei. Your head start begins now. You arrive at the outskirts of the temple with Sensei late next day. As with Sabishi Castle, the Ochita had fortified their position, guarding all entries. Follow me, says Sensei. You track around the side of the complex, pushing your way through the thick undergrowth alongside of the walls. In a small clearing, Sensei stops, mumbles a phrase, and is shot up into the air with a pillar of earth. Whoa. Another Tempest Clan elemental. Very useful in times like this, Sensei says with a chuckle. He teaches you the phrase, and with a few attempts, you get high enough to step over the wall and jump down into the temple complex. First, we take out the guards. Follow my lead. The two of you systematically take out each guard, hiding their bodies in barrels and foliage. With all the enemies taken care of, you approach the main hall. This is sick. You slip into the building quietly, padding down the long corridors in search of Kibu. Inside the main hall, you find Kibu tied up, slumped over, badly beaten. Aware this may have been a setup, you and Sensei observe the scene for a while, waiting for any signs of movement. You eventually sneak out of the shadows and over to Kibu. Sure enough, Ichiro and his goons blast through the main door right on cue and fan out information. That worked better than expected. You both fell right into my hands, grins Ichiro, his man fanning out to cover all exits. Looks like you managed to shake my spy. That silly girl didn't take much convincing to swap sides at all. All I had to do was spin some story about bringing her dead parents back to life. What does he mean? His spy? So, old man, you have front row seats to the recreation of the rightful fifth clan of our realm. Once powerful and feared, now forgotten and ridiculed. Under my leadership, we will see my grandfather's vision realized. He stops to take a deep breath, in and out. It is our divine right to rule this realm. We were the ones entrusted with control of death elementals before they were stolen from us. We will rebuild our strongholds and crush each clan one by one. Then we will make the rules for the rest to follow. The secret to our weakness will die with you today, old man. Our kind will be unstoppable. Ichiro and his men circle around, separating you from Kibu. He steps over to Kibu and rouses him with a knee to the gut. Now, why don't you enlighten me on how exactly you defeated my grandfather? Or this little one may get hurt. Ichiro throws punch after punch into Kibu while Sensei rambles, trying to appease him. Why should I keep you meddling kids and a past prime war hero around after this? I will be the strongest leader in the entire realm, and there's nothing you can do about it. I even tricked your princess into joining me. He continues to beat Kibu, glancing to Sensei as he frantically searches for a way out. You must do something. What do you say? Convince him you can help. Threaten him. Go along with his rant. Pick his plan apart. Let's pick his plan apart. You delusional shell of a man. Look at you. You scrape together a few men and kick some monks out of a temple and think you're a powerful new leader now? Wake up. 
you'll never get away with any of this. You think you'll be able to counter your weaknesses if you ever get them out of Sensei? Your grandfather sure couldn't figure it out. You will never succeed. The beating stops. Ichiro lets Kibo slump to the floor and draws his sword. I'm getting really sick of your voice, he says menacingly, stepping over top of Kibu, sword poised to tear through his back. You see Sensei's hand begin to glow. He is muttering something under his voice. His eyes closed, brow furrowed, just as Ichiro swings towards Kibu. Sensei unleashes a guttural scream and sends an enormous shockwave outwards, knocking the henchman and Ichiro to the ground. He instantly charges forwards, slashing the throats of his henchmen as they lay on the ground. Ichiro staggers to his feet and turns to face you both. He chuckles. What do you do? I'm gonna fight with Sensei. Oh man. You step in next to Sensei and get in your fighting stance. The henchmen fan out to surround you both before beginning their assault. In a flurry of clashing steel and elemental strikes, you and Sensei fend off the waves of attacks until only Ichiro remains, his guard falling from exhaustion. With minor wounds along his arms and legs, he falls down on one knee, unable to fight any longer. Step away now! Someone screams from across the room. Behind you stands Kira, holding Kibu at knife point, her blade resting across his throat. Step away or I'll kill him. Do it now, she continues. You raise your hand and walk slowly away from Ichiro. What do you do? Try to convince her that Ichiro tricked her or B, use your elemental powers to free Kibu. We're going to end up killing Kira, aren't we? Hmm. All right. You close your eyes and visualize the exact shape and movement of your earth elemental for a moment. You open your eyes and call the phrase. Immediately, a pillow of earth punches through the floorboards, picking up Kira and throwing her towards the rafters before crashing down hard, a shower of earth falling on her unconscious body. Kibu stumbles forward, grasping for breath. You wrap him in a big hug. With Kira subdued and Kibu free, you head over to deal with Ichiro. You grab Ichiro by the neck and throw him against the wall, his bloody body falling to a pile of debris. You stand over him for a moment, watching him struggle for each breath. You may think this is a victory, but you are mistaken. There are many more of us, dispersed across the realm. My younger brothers are raising their own cells as we speak. You may have won this battle, but you will not win the war. You'll never win. This is just the... His sentence cuts off as you plunge your katana through his stomach, the squelch of his organs audible in the now silent hall. Looking deep into his eyes, you watch as he accepts his fate his head eventually nodding forward as he breathes his last breath. You carry Kira in your arms out to the front gate of the temple overlooking the vast valley below. When she wakes up, you have a chance to explain the tricks Ichiro played on her. She sobs and apologizes to you all for ever betraying you. The death of my parents has haunted me for my whole life. I shouldn't have been so stupid as to believe him. Your arms wrapped around Kira. You pull her in tight. You stare at the beautiful valley below its cherry blossoms shimmering in the morning sun. So, what will you do now? Regroup and build the dojo together. You'll need all the help you can get. Or B, hunt down the remaining cells. Um, let's hunt them down. Need company? I'd love to kick some more butt, <laughs> says Kibu cheerfully. Make that too, Kira adds quietly. Yeah, let's go, let's go some party members up in this. Why not, you say with a smile. The three of you turn to look at Sensei. If you need me, I'll be back at home working with the other students. We will need all the help we can get in the war ahead. With that, the three of you say your goodbyes and head out into the forest. So begins a new chapter for you all. <sighs> this is beautiful, man. This is, um... And with that, we complete the Gen Yu storyline. Honestly, that, that was a pretty emotional experience. Uh, growing up, I watched a lot of anime. In my adulthood, not so much, but I feel like the manga was, or if you would call this a manga, I feel like the Gen Yu experience really captures the essence for a lot of people in different walks of life. For example, there's the people that are perfectionists, right? Mastering your craft and all that. That's how I actually played this time. Uh, according to that narrative. And there's people that value family. This appeals to older adults in their 30s and 40s, maybe those having their first kid. 
And for those people, protecting their family comes first. And then there's the younger people, right? Maybe the ages of 12 to 18. Those people that are uh, still up and coming, getting into society. You have the hero dream. You want to get out there. You want to save lives. You are the hero in your anime. You are the male protagonist in your harem, whatever you want to call it. This Gen U experience also caters to those people. So overall, I really like the experience. I think for a little bit of a nitpick, I feel like some of the dialogue wasn't too cohesive. And also from, from one panel to the other, sometimes the transition was a little bit weird and the dialogue doesn't really stitch the two panels together, if that makes any sense. But overall, I really like this. I love the story. I love the music that adds so much to the experience. And I've had goosebumps so many times playing through this, which goosebumps don't lie. Goosebumps just means I'm excited as fuck, all right? <laughs> I highly enjoyed this. I do plan to do some deep research into what the choices can affect and what the dice roll percentages are, basically trying to max min my opportunities. And I will try to do an optimized run for my souls two and number three. That's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all next time.